Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here and today we're going to be talking about the new DJI Mavic Air. If a Mavic Pro and a Spark had a baby, that's exactly what the Mavic Air looks like. So what DJI have done is they've taken the technology from the Mavic, they've taken the technology from the Spark and also from the Phantom and have jammed all of that together into a new drone. Now this drone really is for hobbyists, uh, for people that love to travel, um, and also for people who love adventure sports and the outdoors. It's a great drone to take with you. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna jump in and talk about some of the specs in detail in just a second. But first of all, let's talk about what is really kind of new on it here. Uh, one of the new things about it is if you look at it, um, of course, this is the Mavic. The size is a little bit smaller. The size is somewhere in between the Mavic and the Spark. In fact, this is the exact size of it. So if we were to compare it here, you'll see that the width of the Mavic Air is exactly the same width as the current Mavic. Of course, it's a little bit shorter and the front kind of looks a little bit more like a Spark. Now in height, this is actually the height right there of the of the air and you can see it's shorter. It's not just shorter than the Mavic, but it's also shorter than the Spark when the uh, when the arms are closed. Looking at the weight, the weight of the Mavic Air comes in right in the middle between the Mavic Pro and the Spark. So I'm just gonna read this off right now. The Mavic Air is 430 grams compared to the Mavic Pro, which is 740 grams. And of course the Spark is 300 grams, so it's, it's a little less than half the weight. So it's a little closer to the weight of the Spark than it is to the um, to the Mavic Pro. So it's a great drone for travel. The Mavic Air has front, bottom, and now has rear sensors on there. A total of six sensors, which gives it seven cameras on board if you include this. And this gives it forwards and backwards obstacle avoidance, which is really big because a lot of the time when you crash, it's not going to be when you're moving forward. Usually it's when you're flying backwards. The new is APAS, which is Advanced Pilot Assistance System. And this uses really advanced obstacle avoidance and sensing to be able to avoid obstacles while continuing to fly. So say, for example, you were going through a forest and with some trees, it could track you through the trees. Maybe you're riding a mountain bike or something like that. And uh, it can follow you theoretically without crashing into trees. We're going to be testing later on more in depth when we do a full review on it. So up till now, the newer DJI copters are able to do object tracking where you actually mark that object and it will track it and it will follow it. Uh, but now it can track multiple objects. So obviously it's not going to split in half and follow those objects. But say, for example, you've got two people riding together on bikes or running or, you know, kayaking or whatever. It can follow those. So now you can get shots where it'll go around where it can encompass both objects and get nice shots. So, you know, it could be two of you in the shot now and it can create automatically some nice compositions. So all the flight modes are in here. Um including a new one, uh, Asteroid. Asteroid kind of starts like a tiny planet and then kind of comes down. All the other smart shots, the Pano, the 360, all that stuff is in there. Now, one of the things that's neat is the gimbal looks a lot more like the gimbal on the Spark. And one of the problems I have with the Mavic here is this gimbal is kind of flimsy and I've actually broken a couple of them. With the Spark, it's more kind of encompassed inside you know so a lot of it's under the body and it's kind of a square camera that kind of shows there. it's a little bit more robust and now it has that style of camera however it goes beyond what we had in the spark and we have a three axis gimbal on the mavic era so it's a nice robust gimbal but let's talk about the camera the sensor is the same size as what we have on the current mavic and it was 12 megapixel that's the same for photographs it supports raw which is really nice the spark didn't have raw uh, but where it really kind of shines is this is actually best of class video. We've seen improvements over video, not just in the Spark, but actually over the Mavic as well. So we have 4K video. Okay, that's not really new news for Mavic users, but for Spark, you only had 1080. But here's the thing. At 2.7, it can shoot up to 60 frames per second, so you can get slow motion. And here's the really cool thing. 
it's actually two more cool things. One of the things I find really interesting is it can shoot 120 frames per second at full HD. That's 1920 by 1080, 120 frames per second. So that's going to give us quarter speed when we put it in post to give beautiful fluid slow motion. I am super excited about that. And here's the other thing that's going to blow your mind. The video bit rate. It's 100 megabits per second. Now, what does that mean? Well, think about that. The video doesn't look good if it gets overly compressed. The more compression, the less quality on a final video. So a bigger bit rate means that we can have better quality video with less compression artifacts. So let's compare that to the Mavic Pro. The Mavic Pro currently is 60 megabits per second bandwidth. So we've got almost double the bandwidth from the current Mavic Pro. And then check this out. The Spark is only 24 megabits per second bit rate. So the video quality technically is four times better than what's on the current Spark. So that is huge. So we've got the flexibility of being able to fold this up and fly and shoot really good video. And we can see here that, you know, I'm playing some video right now from DJI's demo reels. And you can see it's really good looking video. And this was shot on the Mavic Air. So the camera's a little bit wider than the other two. It has an 85 millimeter uh, field of view. So you can see a little bit wider than the Mavic or the Spark. And the other thing with the camera, it actually can focus at 0.5 meters, which is closer than either of these two. And of course, it also focuses off to infinity. So let's talk about speed. So the ascent and descent speed is about similar to the Spark. And ascent and descent could go a lot faster, but it's been slowed down because if you're coming down too fast, you get prop wash and you can cause a crash. So that's basically why we have the ascent descent speed set to that rate. It's about three meters per second. Now let's talk about forward speed though. In sport mode, the Mavic Air is faster than the Mavic Pro and faster than the Spark. The Mavic Air can do almost 43 miles per hour versus 40 miles per hour for the Mavic Pro and 30 miles per hour for the Spark. So it's actually faster than both of those copters. The battery on the Mavic Air obviously is somewhere between the Mavic Pro and the Spark. In fact, the capacity is double the Spark and just a little bit under the Mavic Pro. The Mavic Pro right now is 3830 uh, milliamp hours, whereas the Mavic Air it comes in at 2970 milliamp hours compared to the Spark, which is 1480 uh, milliamp hours. So it's quite a uh, quite a juicy battery there to give 21 minutes of flight time. Also has support for the DJI goggles. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys kind of little heads up about some of the things in here um, and and talk about it there. So, you know, if this is something you're looking at, you've been looking at maybe getting a Mavic or maybe a Spark. Maybe you like the Spark, but you didn't like not having raw. And also, you know, you wanted to be able to shoot 4K. Well, right now you've got a great little copter here, which is smaller than the current Mavic Pro, a little bit bigger than the Spark but really a pack some decent punch. It's got, you know, good camera, good quality video, forward and rearward obstacle avoidance as well as downward, which means of course, it's also gonna fly inside um, using the sensor inside, optical flow, all those good things. The controller is nice, um, looks very much like the Spark controller. So the Phantom 4 Pro, don't forget, has the one inch Sony RX100 sensor, which is really good in low light, mechanical shutter, 20 megapixel images, and 150 megabits per second uh, data rate for the video. So if you're a professional, the Phantom 4 Pro is still gonna be the way for you to go. Now, if you're a serious hobbyist, enthusiast, amateur, vlogger, traveler, sports enthusiast, um, you know, really the kind of person that would get the Mavic before, I think this Mavic Air is gonna be really exciting for you. So uh, once I get my hands on a unit, which is gonna be as soon as possible, I'm gonna do the fully comprehensive review like you guys are used to seeing from me. So anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Drop a comment, let me know what you think about it. If you like this quick little video, smash that like button into dust. And if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button right now because I do at least one video, usually three videos a week on reviews, Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.